We all have a bucket list, you know, a list of things we want to do before we die. I am a coaster enthusiast, so I just have a list full of roller coasters I want to ride. This list does not contain the most critically acclaimed or well-known coasters in the world, and has the coasters that resonate with me for odd reasons. However much I want to ride Zandra, Fury 325, or DC Rivals Hypercoaster, none of these elite coasters are on my personal bucket list. I try to keep most of the coasters international, I hesitate to put something like Steel Vengeance on there, because I know that in my lifetime, even in the near future, I will get out to Cedar Point and ride it. So if you notice that most of them are international coasters, then you are correct. One more thing, so you're not confused, these 10 coasters on my bucket list are not how I would rank them after riding them, it's based on my crave to go out and see them. If you know my coaster preferences, I like airtime, smoothness, launches, and theming, and don't enjoy multi-loopers or crave high-intensity coasters. With that in mind, let's get down to my top 10 bucket list coasters. I know I said I do not like multi-loopers or intensity, but contradicting that statement is my number 10 bucket list coaster, Anaconda at Gold Reef City. This Gina Vola invert is super unique, I feel like this is the reason they want to make it out to South Africa. For some reason, I am always attracted to weird, out of place, different, hard to get, unique items, and this is the only Ginevola invert in the world, and that really stands out to me. You also have a good environment. I caution to say the word theming, as it's just rock work, ponds, and palm trees, but it looks to have a great environment to ride in. That, with the rapids right around you, seems to heighten the ride experience greatly. For its uniqueness and diverseness, I really want to make it out to Johannesburg, South Africa, to ride this one of a kind invert. In the number 9 spot is Flying Dinosaur. You've probably heard of this coaster for being the best flying coaster in the world and being quite intense, but that is not why I like it. I do like flying coasters in general, as seen in my love for Tatsu, but that's not it either. For some odd reason, I really cannot figure it out, I just want to ride this coaster. I want to say something about the color palette, that you're going to make fun of me because it's just grey and green, but the colors do stand out to me. It's also something about the station, though it's not too unique, it looks really cool in my eyes. I really don't know. I just have an attraction to this coaster that I cannot explain. This b and Flying Coaster at Universal Studios Japan is my number 9 bucket list coaster, and I really hope I can get out to it in the near future. Another coaster in Japan, and in the number 8th spot, is Hakuge. Now I like RMC, I like airtime, and I like smoothness, and those are elements that RMC has. Additionally, this is some of RMC's finest work, it gets ranked in the top 10 coasters in the world. However, that's not the main draw of this coaster for me. The colors, I love the colors. Call me weird, but the color palette of this ride is absolutely stunning. The white and blue mix perfectly together, and it is eye candy to the viewer. I've only seen it in pictures and videos, and the track looks perfect, I just hope it's like that in person. I feel if I ever go, the colors will not be as vibrant and be more faded and dark than in pictures, however I can still count on getting a good ride if I ever hit up Nabashima Spa Land. All the way to the United Kingdom, for the number 7 spot is Nemesis at Alton Towers. Yes, this contradicts my multi-looper intensity statement yet again, but come on, this ride looks sick. This is getting retracked soon, so that means I will be able to ride it in my lifetime, and for that, I am grateful. Pretty much all of Alton Towers coasters are pretty cool, and for that I had to thank their PR team. I love their advertisements and calling their project secret weapons. This resonates with me deep down, it hypes you up more for the ride than it should. This is less apparent for Nemesis, but secret weapon number 3 hits different. You have an amazing level of theming, the alien pinned down as the centerpiece is stunning, and you have some backstory with the Ministry of Defense using the coaster track to pin down the alien. This ride is really really cool, along with most of the coasters at Alton Towers, and I cannot wait to go there someday. Another coaster in Europe, at a park called Fantasia Land, and I will give you a hint, there is more than one coaster on this list from here. In the number 6 spot is Black Mamba. This may come as a surprise to you all, yet another invert, yet another intense coaster, we might as well forget what I said at the beginning of the video now. This BNM invert located in the deep Africa section of the park runs through numerous buildings, trenches, tunnels, and the great looking environment. The surrounding buildings and the lush greenery has this coaster up there on my bucket list, and is the reason I need to make it up to Fantasia Land. I know I said I would refrain from American parks and coasters, but these coasters are must-dos and I can physically not remove them from my bucket list until I ride them. There are three of them, so bear with me here. In Florida, and surprisingly the only Disney coaster on this list, is Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. This indoor Facoma spinning coaster opened in May as the most expensive coaster in the world. While that may be true or not, it is definitely something I want to see for myself. I've heard a lot of talk about it being an improved version of Space Mountain, and even if that's the case, I think I will still love it. After all, Space Mountain is my favorite Disney coaster. Additionally, I love the Guardians of the Galaxy IP, I think Disney used it very well with this in Breakout, and I do not see a reason why Cosmic Rewind could not be as successful. You had the upbeat music, with the one exception, the fast-paced ride, the storyline, the theming, the immersiveness, and the Disney touch of magic. What else could you ask for? I cannot wait to get over to Florida one day and ride this. And the next two coasters. Sorry for spoiling. Like I said, staying in Florida, and another world-class elite coaster, we have Velocicoaster. Did you seriously think I was not going to put this on my list? Until I make it out there, it's staying right here. 
I could care less about the layout, the elements, and the forces, sorry if I hurt you right there, but I care about how the layout, elements, and forces interact with the environment. This is universal. They have theming, and they have good theming. They have the audacity to build thrill coasters, and they have the skill to build thrill coasters with theming. This is my dream. I find Disney coasters not intense enough, but still want the level of theming that Disney has. Too bad they really have nothing of the sorts at Universal Studios Hollywood, I guess I will have to go to Florida sometime soon. You know this coaster is in Florida, and you are asking what beats Velocicoaster. And there is an obvious answer. Iron Gwazi. Well you could not be more wrong. My number 3 bucket list coaster is actually Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure Super Long Title Universal Needs to Get Better at Naming Coasters. Yes, this is it. I'm not saying that it is a better coaster than Velocicoaster, I know that is completely wrong. I'm just more excited to ride this. Again, call me extremely weird, but you are watching a YouTube video about my personal preferences, and my personal preferences are telling you that I'm excited for this more. You have the theming, that's even better than Velocicoaster. You know I don't care about intensity or inversion, so that's a hit there. You also know that I love launches. This coaster has seven. Watching the design, operation, and versatility of this coaster has me in awe, and is the reason why I need to make it out there in my lifetime. Additionally, my love for the Harry Potter IP is yet another reason why I need to go here. Going across the world back to Europe, at a park we mentioned before, and in the number 2 spot is Terra and Aphantasia Land. Launches? Yes. Theming? Yes. Okay, that's all what I need. This is a thrill coaster with superb theming. I feel like I said this enough already, the rock work, the surrounding buildings, the atmosphere look to be some of the best. I feel like this coaster was built for me. There are zero inversions, which I'm perfectly fine with, however flying through the environment with a good amount of speed sounds like icing on a cake to me. Not only that, but I have heard that this coaster offers decent airtime, which is one of my favorite elements on a coaster. Zipping through buildings, tunnels, rocks with a bunch of speed along with good airtime moments sounds like one of the best coasters period. For these reasons, I cannot wait to get to Fantasia Land one day. What beats the two most expensive coasters in the world, Terran and Velocicoaster? There are a lot of right answers, but the number one coaster that I need to ride before I die is yet again located at Fantasia Land. At this point, it should be a bucket list park video. You would know who wins, but we'll save that video for later. Fly. One word, three letters. My most anticipated coaster. This Vacoma Flying Dutchman located at Fantasia Land looks to be the coaster of my dreams. I have already expressed my love for flying coasters when talking about Flying Dinosaur, and this of course is a Flying Dutchman, the good kind of Flying Dutchman, the new gen Vacoma on a pile of garbage Flying Dutchman. Anyway, so there's that. You also have my favorite element in the coaster, theming. The entire Rook Barrel area is very well built and the architecture is just amazing. Then you have a coaster flying through this area and you cannot ask more from me. There are also some sort of dark ride section and me being Disney appreciates this more than others. There's no POV in this ride per Fantasia Land's rules, so I'll have to wait and see an experience myself. It's probably better that way as well. You then have a launch. Yes, a launch. Another one of my favorite coaster elements, and it's on a flying coaster. Fantasia Land, I just cannot wait. One day, one day. This isn't even it though. I haven't mentioned it before in the video, but on-ride soundtracks are amazing. I don't know if this is my Disney origins talking, but on-ride soundtracks spice up the ride by tenfold, and I absolutely love it. Fly has a short soundtrack after being dispatched in the dark ride section. I have listened to it and it's really good. I swear to god I could not ask for more. Fantasia Land, I love you so much. I'll be there soon, I wish. No, but you foster three of my bucket list coasters, so I desperately need to get to you and ride my number one bucket list coaster, Fly. That's it for today's video, guys. Please make sure to like and subscribe if possible, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!